I'm not sure where to begin. I'm, it's such a huge story that involves uh, so many uh, layers, uh, uh, public, private, professional. Um, I think uh, uh, Alex Gibney did a fantastic job of, uh, of uh, showing you and uh, demonstrating that uh, the, the so many layers of the onion, uh, as Tom Rogers uh, normally says. Um, I think that uh, for the most part it gives you a, a sense of the behind the scenes look at uh, what it took to, uh, to get us to this point. There are so many uh, items that uh, you don't see in the paper um, and sometimes if you don't live on the, on close to the east coast, close to the epicenter of democracy in DC, sometimes uh, we tend to be uh, a little bit naive about what's going on there. Um, and uh, like I said, I think Alex did a terrific job of, of giving us the, the, the facts behind one of the largest congressional scandals in history. So uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here tonight. Um, I wish it was under other circumstances, but so be it. Um, thank you all, and uh, I'll take, I'll just hand it over to the other gentleman here. Um, and uh, feel free to uh, ask any questions that you may have or comment. Thank you so much, uh, David. Uh, one beautiful, there's, like I said, as David pointed out, there are so many different um, levels to this. Uh, this wonderful gentleman to my right, um, his father brought us together. Um, his father, Ernest Sicky, asked me, who I had not met before, if I would meet him in um, um, on the West Coast, because Ernest, his father, uh, lives in Seattle. And I said, of course, Ernest, I live in D.C. or Alexandria, Virginia, to be exact, but I will be coming out on the West Coast for a tribal leaders meeting. Um, and so I, this was in December of 2002. We meet in 2003 in Palm Springs, California, for a Native American tribal leaders meeting. And I don't know if you knew this, Neil, but on the way down to that meeting, I was getting on the escalator, and as I rounded the corner, there was a huge Greenberg Troutwick marketing booth. I knew then that we had already had something with regard to Greenberg Trout, but it just kind of brought a smile to my face because about 50 yards from that moment, I wandered into a, uh, a bar and I was looking for a gentleman like you always do sometimes. You're in a place you've never met with somebody and you go, Ernest, Tom? And then we, I said, what's happening, Ernest? He goes, well, Tom, uh, our lobbyist, I think, is defrauding us and threatening us and we would like your help. He says, you need to talk to my young son, David Zick, who just recently got elected. And so David and I started sharing documents and phone calls at midnight. And poor, poor Kelly Sick, his wife, who was dating him at the time, who was in the back there, was a lovely young woman, um, was beginning to wonder about uh, David and I with these late night phone calls. <laughs> um, but what came out of that um, was David and I worked together, and this is what I said, money is not the currency in this country, trust is. And him and I worked together for two years without ever meeting each other, but over a phone line. And I'll leave that with that, because like I said, what I wanted to point out was that money is not the currency, trust is, which we have lost sight in this country. Uh, I guess we're gonna open it up for questions. I guess the only thing I'd add to that is, you know, as somebody who's personal involvement in the Abramoff scandal was something that brings a lot of shame to myself. I owe everybody in this room an apology. I'd apologize to you guys. I'll do it again publicly. Um, and I think you hit the nail on the head. Again, the Abramoff scandal is very personal to me. Alex could make a hundred hours, you know, footage as far as I'm concerned and still barely begin to touch the issues that we really are talking about and mainly the issue of the public trust in their government. And so, you know, personally, I got sentenced in 2007, and I got contacted by Alex Gibney's staff maybe a week later. And it was just like, I had lived in a cave for about three years, listening to nobody but lawyers, you know, watching what I had started off thinking was a good public service career, you know, go in the shitter. And th this movie helped me personally because it was just, 
I had much advice from family, friends. I prayed about it a lot. And I was talking about it earlier today, and I don't even know why I bring it up, but I talked with Michael Bieber, who had been Ronald Reagan's communications director. And he had really good advice for me because he had broken the one-year band too. And he said, at some point, you just got to get honest. He was like, sometimes it's easiest to just kind of put yourself two years, five years, ten years down the road. But, you know, that's going to feed this whole, just, just shoot straight today and get up tomorrow and do it again. I don't know that I can undo a lot of the stuff I did, but, you know, I can tell people honestly I'm trying. So with that said, I mean, you know, if anybody's got any questions or whatever, fire away. Woman in the red, on the red uh, side. I'd like to know your opinion on why the sentences are so lenient. I think Tom and Ray should still be in prison. So, uh, I formerly clerked for a judge when I was, uh, before I went into work in the United States Senate. And um, what was very instructive at that time was that. Increasingly, the role that money is playing in our judicial system is quite unsettling. You're seeing a lot more judges having to run for statewide office, um, a lot more judges having to be their own political patrons. And even when I was there, um, where I clerked, you had the Carter judges, you had the Reagan judges, you had the Bush judges. And for you, for America, to think that Justice is blind. I, I did, after I left my clerkship, and that's no indictment of where I clerked. It's just that we all gravitate towards own, our own herd, and just like those judges did. And I think that um, I, I, if I had my way, I would have had all those guys cleaning toilets on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. <laughs> but that was not my choice to make. Yes. Kind of black. <laughs> yeah, the, um, I feel like we're under a, a tidal wave about to hit us with the Supreme Court. So basically exactly. throwing out all regulation of financial reform. Right. Uh, uh, this movie kind of preps us for something the likes of which we've never seen in our life, much worse than we've had. Could you comment on what you think this deregulation would do? It seems like all stops have been pulled. It's now people. I'll be short, and then I'll turn over to David and then to Neil. Um, is um, you are right. Uh, yes, money gives you a voice, but it also gives you a megaphone. And and uh, I told this to my parents. I grew up in eastern Montana, and I told mom and dad, I said, "Mom, you guys, when I first came to the Senate, now off the hill, and I have the wonderful fortune of advocating on behalf of the most impoverished." group of people in this country, which are Native Americans, um, is there is, there are such unequal voices now. My mom, who I talk to a lot, I would tell her mom, she would call me and ask me about watching C-SPAN. And I would say, Mom, your voice isn't heard. And it isn't heard. Um, to a limited degree, but increasingly the outsized role that money plays, it's just it just keeps growing exponentially and exponentially and exponentially. And the only way you can combat that, because once again, um, if you think elections don't matter, uh, whatever your political persuasions, and I agree with what Neil said, this is not a political party issue. This is a human condition issue. That money makes you do things you don't want to do. And the best man who ever said that was in Hal Holbrook in the movie Wall Street. If you remember that movie. Money makes you do but things that you don't want to do. And we've got to find some way to get around this because money is driving the system, pushing it and pulling it and pulling us apart. These people should not be there working 65, 70% of their time a week raising money. They should be serving us as, you know, as a public policy service, not as a fundraising service. And, it's, and if you want to blame somebody, look in the mirror. If you want to get a little tough love, look in the mirror. Finance these things, these campaigns publicly. Read like your life depends on it, because it does. This information about Sun Cruz Casinos was right there, and that's how I found out on my Lexus Nexus back in 2001. It was all out there. It's 